Hi there and welcome to the review of the 8th generation Audi S6. Now usually I would do this introduction from outside the car but as you can tell it's very windy out there. But you might not know it from the inside of this car. You've got Audi's new MMI system over here which is inherited from the Audi Q8. Two touch screens, one on top, one at the bottom, controls everything. You can even have a custom profile with up to 400 individual settings. It's got Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, now wireless. And it also comes with a myriad of features like this reverse camera over here. Just unbelievable. I can see exactly how close I am parked to that pavement over there. It's got haptic feedback over here, so when you touch buttons on these two screens over here, it feels like you're actually touching an actual button, not just the screen. The bottom screen is the one you'd use for the usual things like climate control and seat warmers. Although the car has got these two screens over here, it kind of has a third screen on the dash over here. You can customize this display quite nicely and uh, just make the map full screen on the front of the dash. Now, although this is not new, the resolution on here very much is. Inside, the Audi is almost faultless. And dare I say, when it comes to fit and finish, it might be better than its competitors. You've got two cup holders over there, a cubbyhole over there, more cup holders on the side, and this storage compartment on the right over there. You've even got a cubbyhole here which has USB and wireless charging. But having said that, I don't think that interior storage, at least up front here, is as adequate as I would have liked it. S6 comes with soft touch doors which close the doors automatically if you don't close them all the way. It also has soft touch open which I'm still getting used to. The boot space is around 530 liters, which is similar to the E53 AMG and interestingly the same as the Q5 SUV. But the main party trick of course is how this car drives. So let's hit the road and find out. S6 has the same RS5 engine, 331 kilowatts and 600 newton meters of torque. But it's not quite as crazy. The RS5 was one of my favorite performance cars when it came out. But this isn't the same car. It also has 48 volt little compressor thing that somehow feeds power to the engine. Basically that means that the turbo is always on boost and this car basically drives like a naturally aspirated car. Now I know some of you guys are shouting for me to go fast around some corner somewhere. But I feel like this is not what this car is about. And the one big reason for that is this air suspension. And this has got to be one of the most comfortable cars on sale today. Now that we've left the confines of suburbia, the Audi S6 once again feels absolutely at home. I'm on the R27 heading towards Langebaan and I've got about an hour's drive ahead of me. And this car is exactly the kind of car that I want to be taking out to the hustle and bustle of my suburban everyday life and head off on vacation. Yes, it's got the RS5 331 kilowatt engine and yes, it does know 200 in 4.5 seconds. But it's almost as if this car isn't wanting to do those things all the time. Stick it into dynamic mode on the awkwardly located button over here. And you can put your foot down and hit the national limit within absolute seconds. It's such a pity that the South African market doesn't appreciate sedans anymore and this car is a good car. 
if you are in the market for something that's got fantastic bolt quality and has got performance to match, I think this might just be better than the E15. 